All right, we're back. We're on page 135. It's actually the last page of Vector Notes. Um, and I think we've come a really, a really long way. Uh, we've learned a lot of stuff. And we're just going to keep going, doing problems that we sort of know how to do. Maybe we don't know exactly how to do, but we know all the things that are necessary. Uh, so let's see what we can do. So first problem, use vectors to show that the points 3, 5, 7, 17, and negative 2, negative 10 are collinear. So this is kind of an interesting idea. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to say, like, if I have three points, so let's say that they're, like, not collinear, I guess. Uh, and I draw my vectors. Well, if they're not collinear, then the vector, so this only works if you have three points, by the way. I'm going to use the same initial point. So here's my initial point. Um, they have the same initial point, and then I've created two vectors. If the points are not collinear, then these two vectors will not be scalar multiples of each other. If the points are collinear, the only thing that could happen with our vectors, think about how we write the vector equation of a line. We use the fact that all of the points on the line create parallel vectors, right? Scalar multiples of each other. We're going to basically use that. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to say that this is the point 3, 5. And then uh, you definitely don't want to worry about the like accuracy of your drawing, you just want to get an idea, right? So uh, let's call this like A, B, and C, I guess. So the vector A, B is going to be 7 minus 3 is 4, and then 17 minus 5 is 12. And then the vector A, C is going to be negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, and then negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15. Okay, so now the question is, are these scalar multiples of each other? Well, uh, what's, what's the easiest thing to do here? Uh, divide by, yeah, I think, so I'm going to say, since uh, AB is equal to, so if I divide AC by negative 5, I get 1, 3. And then if I multiply that by 4, I get... 4 twelve. So I'm going to say it's negative 4 fifths of AC, AB, and AC are parallel. Therefore, AB and C are collinear. So if I had four points, this wouldn't work necessarily, right? So four points, what could have happened is you could have this and then this, right? You can actually get two parallel vectors that aren't from the same line. Like there's, there's no way to know in that scenario. But in this case, because what we have is um, only three points, we can do this, right? They share a point, they share their initial point, and then their terminal points go wherever. Uh, these must be collinear because the vectors are parallel. So same idea sort of um, works in reverse, right? So if we do A, B, C, I'm going to find the vector A, B. So I, I pretty much always use the same initial point. So like I'm going to find A, B, and I'll find A, C. So A, B is 4 and 12. So it's actually the same vector. AC is going to be negative 5 minus 17. And so since uh, negative 5 over 4 does not equal negative 17 over 12, there is there doesn't exist a K. There's no K. There is no K. If I'm not mistaken, this symbol, well, this is there exists. I think this symbol must be there does not exist. I haven't used that symbol in a long time, if that is a symbol. Um, so I'm just going to say there is no k such that ab equals k times ac. Therefore, ab and c are not collinear. And that's, uh, that's all we really need. Um, if they were collinear, they would have been parallel. Uh, they're not parallel, and so uh, they can't be collinear. All right. So these are that's like something that you kind of know how to do, but maybe you don't realize you know how to do. And we run into that a lot. You have to really, it's hard because like, I don't know how to make you think this way. 
but you really want to like try to think of new and different ways to use the material that we've learned. Um, and again, like, I don't know how you do that unless you get to develop this worldview where you're always kind of thinking like, Hey, could I do this? Could I do that? And then you just try it. Uh, you know, we have a lot of technology things that we can try to like use to help us. So it's not always diving in with this giant algebraic thing, let the cast do it for you, whatever. Um, let's take a look at the next one. So the angle formed by placing the vectors three, zero. So that's key. This is, this is a, a well-defined vector three, zero and a B. So a B we don't know necessarily at the origin is 140 degrees. Okay. But then the length of a B is six find uh, a and B. I think we can definitely do this. So let's start with a picture. So let's say uh, we got this and then this. All right, so the vector AB is gonna be, AB, no, the vector three zero is gonna be like here. All right, so that's three zero. And then AB and this vector form an angle of 100 and, I don't know what color that is. Maybe it's that color, uh, 140 degrees. But we don't know which way, right? So it could be that it's like this, right? Where this could be AB and this would be 140 degrees. Or it could be that it's like, this, where this is 140 degrees, there's no way to know. But what's nice is that, um, so I guess this, I should say this is negative 140. Um, we know the magnitude of the vector. So this could be a, b. I know the magnitude is uh, six. And so since I know the magnitude is six, I can actually, I'm like already basically done with this. So what if I just say, that uh, AB could be six, which is the magnitude. And then if I go this way, all I have to do is cosine and sine, right? So it's cosine of 140, sine of 140. And that's as good as it's gonna get, we can get a decimal, uh, but that's, that's actually as good as it'll get. The decimal will just be an approximation. If we go the other way, we get, it still has a magnitude of six, and now its direction angle will be the cosine of negative 140 and the sine of negative 140. So what made this work is that the angle that we're finding, not the angle, the vector, the first given vector, three zero, just happens to be on the x-axis. So like the 140 degrees is the angle that you're rotating. So this is like a pretty straightforward problem. The next problem is a little less straightforward same basic idea. So these, uh, I guess, if you wanted, you could use a calculator. So we'll use calculator for approximation. And I don't think we really need to do that, but you, you're more than welcome to try it out. Uh, this one's a little different, right? So here we have a vector three, one, and another vector a, b, and then the angle is still 140, the length is still six, we want to find A and B. So I'm going to start off with another picture in the hopes that it kind of uh, makes clear what's going on, which it may or may not, I don't know. Uh, so three, one, let's say is like here. And then if I go 140 degrees in either direction, um, I'm going to get to where I'm going. So I don't know, 140 degrees, maybe, let's say like here, All right? So we'll say that this is 140 degrees. So that's the angle between the vectors. So that's key. So what can I do here? I feel like I have to tackle this in a slightly different way because I don't know, uh, well, I don't have to, but I want to, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like I could find the direction angle for this. Um, like this is the arctan of one third. And then I could just do that the direction angle is the arctan of one third plus 140 or the arctan of one third minus 140 multiplied by six and it's like kind of done. I would prefer to do it a different way, but that would work. So like 
check that and see if it works. In fact, I'll do it on the calculator in, in a minute and see if it did work. I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna say, I know the angle between them, right? So I know that the cosine of 140 degrees should be the dot product, which would be 3a plus b, which if we call this uh, u and v, then this is u dot v. The magnitude of a is the square root of 10. The magnitude, uh, not the magnitude of a, the magnitude of u is square root of 10. The magnitude of v is given. The magnitude of v is six, so I already know that. So I can just multiply by six. Okay, so this is an equation that has two unknowns. I don't know what to really do with it, but that's one equation with two unknowns. And then I also, what else do I know? I know, because I know the magnitude, I know the magnitude of AB is six, so I know that A squared plus B squared is six squared, it's 36. This is two equations, two unknowns. So let's use a calculator to solve it. So let's see. So we're going to the calculator and we'll see what we get. So I'm going to try both. So I'm going to do uh, the, the system of equations, which I think is the way to go. Um, but I'll also do the other one where it's like a little less thinking, but sometimes less thinking is worse, right? Like it's always like think, think smarter, not harder or whatever. Uh, but like also sometimes hard, hard thinking is a, a good thing to do. So let's see, I want to solve. So I just changed to degrees. If you, uh, if you remember it's doc seven, two tab enter. I think you should know how to do that. Like make sure you can do that really fast. So here we're going to solve a system. So I'll actually, I'll use menu three, seven, which is system. Always choose system of equations, even if it is linear, because it just, it'll still let you do it. Uh, I'm going to use X and Y because I'm just used to that. So cosine of 140 degrees, because I'm in degree mode, is 3x plus y over square root of 10 times 6. And then uh, also, x squared plus y squared equals 6 squared, well, 36, obviously. And I'm going to get a decimal, or decimals, I should say. So I'm getting that... Remember, x is a and y is actually b. So I'm getting that a, b could be negative 5.58, let's say 0, I guess, and then 2.205, or negative uh, 3.141. Uh, negative 5.112. Okay, so I think those are my answers. Uh, so now let me try it the other way. The other way I was thinking of doing it was like six times uh, cosine of 140 plus. So the I'm going to use arctan of one third. And the reason I'm using that is because the vector is 3, 1, so inverse tangent of 1 over 3 would be its direction angle. Uh, so this should, I think this should work, sine of 1, 4, I should have made this here, uh, like a, a good way to do this is this, like I'm going to call this Z or T or whatever you want, Z, so I'm going to do Z equals 140 plus arctan of 1 third. So this, I think, should work. So that gives me, yeah, it gives me the first answer. And then I think I should be able to do arctan and then minus 140 um, and get the other answer, which I do. So, I mean, that's totally a fine way to do it. I think that the first way though, gives you like a little more insight into what's going on, perhaps, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna go back to the notes uh, and then stop the video. And maybe actually let me write down, I'll write down that other method. So do six cosine of uh, 140 plus 10 inverse. You know what, how about this? Let's do the arc 10 
and inverse of one third, and then I'll say plus or minus 140 degrees, comma, sine of the same. So tan inverse of one third plus or minus 140 degrees. Something I don't like about this answer, I don't know, like it's the right answer. I just, I don't really like that method as much. I don't know why. Um, maybe I'm just biased because I'd prefer to do it the other way. Who could say? Anyway, uh, we're done, right? So we're done with vectors, I think. We're never done with vectors, but we're done with learning the basics. Now it's gonna be like every time they come up, we're just like, oh, remember that, remember that? Maybe we should use vectors to solve this. Uh, they just become something that we do. Uh, and that's good though, because you know we're learning. So anyway, I'll see you in the next set of notes, uh, which I think are about complex numbers. So uh, we'll find out when we get there.